The Clinical Neurophysiologist Key Investigative Procedures In this brief presentation, we will look at the role of the clinical neurophysiologist and explore the various tests that a neurophysiologist carries out. We will go into the details of what the tests are, what disease states or conditions they are used to diagnose, and we will look at the practical aspects of how the neurophysiologist goes about conducting these tests. So firstly, what is a neurophysiologist? A clinical neurophysiologist records and interprets the electrical signals from the central and peripheral nervous system, that is, the brain and spinal column and the nerves that extend from them to all parts of the body. The electrical signals, or action potentials, generated by the body's nervous system can be detected by a machine called an electroencephalogram, or EEG. It is the job of the neurophysiologist to detect, record and interpret these signals in order to assist the neurologist in their diagnosis. So what are the tests? We've already mentioned the EEG. This is probably the most fundamental test that a clinical neurophysiologist will perform. This will be the focus of the practical aspects featured in this presentation. Just briefly, to give a scope of the work, other tests include nerve conduction studies, and evoked potentials that can be categorised as somatosensory, brainstem auditory and visual evoked potentials. These in short test the brain's ability to recept and respond to an external stimulus. The EEG is a fundamental test. It is a graphical display of a difference in voltages from two sites of brain function recorded over time. The brain's neurons produce electrical impulses called action potentials that can be detected using electrodes placed on the scalp of the patient. By identifying the location and type of electrical patterns, normal and abnormal brainwave patterns can be identified. The abnormal signals are known as epileptiform and are seen in people with epilepsy. The EEG gives conclusive evidence of abnormal epileptic signals. So how is an EEG performed? The EEG is a machine consisting of numerous electrodes and leads that are attached to a head box which feeds the electrical information into the neurophysiologist's computer. Usually a minimum of 21 electrodes are used and they're placed in specific arrangements. The neurophysiologist must prepare the patient by attaching the electrodes in the correct areas of the scalp. The patient's head is measured and marks are drawn onto the patient's scalp in the locations of the electrode placement. As can be seen here in this photo, landmarks are found on the patient's scalp and marked with a pen. The electrodes are attached and held in place using a special electrode paste. The method of placing electrodes on the scalp at specific positions is called the 1020 system which is the international standard for EEG electrode placement. Each electrode corresponds to a letter and or a number as per the 1020 system convention. It is important that each electrode is carefully matched up with the correct corresponding lead from the head box as poor placement will give incorrect results. A baseline EEG is performed for around 10 minutes while the patient is relaxed. To stimulate the epileptiform activity in the brain, hyperventilation is often used. The patient is told to breathe in deeply for a few minutes to achieve this. Flashing lights are also used as stimulation and this is done over a period of time with varying frequencies. At the conclusion of the test, the neurophysiologist will analyse the recordings and note any artefacts in the data. Artefacts are erroneous electrical signals detected by the EEG that did not come from neural activity, a bit like an interference in the signal. These can come from things like muscle movements of the patient or opening and closing of the eyes. To conclude the test, the neurophysiologist will prepare an EEG report for the neurologist to discuss with the patient.